What would you do if you only had one day left in this world? Spend it with the people you love? Travel to the far corners of the earth to see as many wonders as possible? Eat nothing but chocolate? Would you apologize for all your mistakes? Would you stand up to those you'd never had the courage to face? Would you tell your secret crush that you loved him or her? Why is it that we wait until the last minute to do the things that we should be doing all along? And this week's opening quote comes from Jody Picoult. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I will be your host for the next hour. And we certainly do have a propensity to do that, folks, to wait until the last minute before doing what we should be doing all along. I mean, we certainly tend to do it in our lives. We put off the things that we most want to do in life because we put all these barriers there and these limitations on ourselves, and so we never really get to do them. But we also tend to have this approach in regard to the world we live in as well, and most especially when you look at the system. Because when you look at the system that controls us, we've seen this system, we've been watching this slavery system come online for so many years now, and everybody sort of thinks it's okay because it's not as bad as they thought it was going to get quite yet. And so they don't really do anything about it. When really the best action we could have taken would have been to do something about it all along. But we didn't know it was coming, so it's understandable that people didn't do anything about this very rapidly encroaching slavery system now. It was the totalitarian tiptoe for a while. It was a slowly encroaching slavery system, but it really seems to be ramping up very much in the last couple of years, folks, and it's just getting more and more in your face, no matter how you look at it. And really, it's a result of us waiting till the last minute to fix things when we should be addressing problems at their root when they first manifest. But anyway... For those of you who don't really understand what I'm talking about, what I'm referring to is the 5G system and the Internet of Things which is being rolled out right beneath our feet right now. You know, we're facing so many issues, folks, from so many different directions, but much of it is just keeping us distracted from what is being rolled out beneath our feet, which is this active denial 5G system, the Internet of Things, which is, in fact, the end game. The Internet of Things and the 5G grid is the end game of the New World Order, and it is the New World Order itself. The New World Order being the New World where everything is orderly. Everything is tracked, everything is accounted for, every move, every action, every conversation, every thought, everything people do is tracked. And that's where we're going with the Internet of Things and the 5G grid, which is being rolled out to people under the guise of giving them faster downloads and more efficient internet access. And it's really kind of important to put all this into perspective, folks, so that people can really see what it is exactly that we're dealing with here, because there's still so many people out there that want to point the finger at someone and have someone to blame and someone to go and arrest and someone to bring down and some government to depose or whatever. And sure, there's a lot of bad people that are doing bad things. There's a lot of governments that shouldn't be there, but when you're looking at the Internet of Things and this 5G surveillance grid and what is really coming online, this technocracy that is coming online, everything else kind of pales into insignificance because in this AI grid that is coming online to control us, and it will be an AI grid, it will be controlled by AI, this is in their own plans. Now in this grid there is no one you can really point the finger at, there's no government you can bring down, there's no one you can really say is the controlling hand at that point. All control leaves the hands of the people and control gets handed over to the internet itself. And that's what they're working towards and it's in all their own documents. 
But looking at all this and looking at how it came about, a few shows ago I did an episode called Giving Life to Lucifer when I went through the metaphorical biting of the apple and what happens when you go on this quest for knowledge and all that sort of stuff. What it leads to is the creation of the internet and what the internet is leading to is automation of everything. That's what it's about. And there's different elements to it. And when you look at the surveillance grid itself and how this has come about, this has all come about due to the actions of what we would refer to as the shadow government. And the shadow government basically is, for all intensive purposes, a spy network that exists within all government that guides the directions that those governments take. When you look at the surveillance grid that's in place, the stuff that Snowden released, however much you want to believe of what Snowden releases, a lot of the stuff he said about the NSA surveillance system was actually very on the money. How they are able to turn on your mobile phones, they're able to monitor virtually every communication that happens on the internet, every logistics program, anybody who's got a computer network in their business or in their home or anything, all of this stuff is monitored. So the question becomes who monitors it? Well, way back in the beginning, it came out of Project Echelon. There were data gathering centers that were set up in all countries, and all of these communications were channeled to a major office in New Zealand where it was all processed. I think a lot of it went through Australia as well. But this was all data processing back in the beginning. That became more advanced with the introduction of the Promise software. The Promise software was used to further automate things. The Promise software was what was used to basically control the 9-11 attacks, put all those extra blips on the screen so nobody knew what was going on because there were operatives operating the Promise software through the back doors that exist within the software. The Promise software then morphed into the Palantir software. Palantir, of course, is the name of the all-seeing balls from Lord of the Rings. You know, the balls that used to be able to look around the whole world and see everything was going on, the all-seeing eye, if you will. This was Palantir in the Lord of the Rings, and this is the name that was adopted for the next generation of the Promise software. The company that developed the Promise software, I believe, just went into liquidation and kind of disappeared, but the software itself continued and morphed into Palantir, and Palantir is now what is controlling the whole global surveillance system. Everything goes through Palantir. Palantir is also one of the major contributors to the DNC and Hillary Clinton, by the way. Now, all of this software, the Palantir software, and all of this surveillance grid was set up, of course, by, you guessed it, the State of Israel. Of course, that's who sets all of this stuff up, and this has been done through Operation Talpiot. Operation Talpiot is an operation which basically places spies within every organization. doesn't matter who it is, wherever you go, whatever it is that's working for technology or is working for something, you'll find that there's someone in there who is an operative who funnels the information back to Israel. And if it isn't a physical person just actually there in the company, then it will be a backdoor into software or some logistics program or some window that Israel has got set up in order to receive that information. That's how the Talpiot program works. Israel, I believe, it has a right to all of this information, of course, because, hey, we're the most downtrodden people on Earth, and, hey, we're the ones that are running all of your surveillance technology for you and running all of your safety systems for you because we have the best technology, and so we need to know all this stuff. Rah, rah, rah. They justify it all these different ways. The reason, of course, Israel has all the best technology and is able to offer you all these surveillance programs is because, of course, they have Operation Talpiot running whereby they are able to siphon all of the great ideas that anybody has and cipher them back to Israel so they can adopt them into their own technology and say, hey, look how clever we are, look what a great idea we had. But basically most of it is stolen from all of the ideas that other people have on the internet because every conversation and every communique is monitored. So this is what has led to this whole global surveillance system being set up. And those that are running it in Mossad and Israel and who control the banking system and all that sort of stuff, they really probably believed when they put it in place that it was going to end up in a position where they're going to be the ones controlling the world. But it's really gone beyond that now with the emergence of AI and the emergent intelligence that is growing on the internet behind the scenes. Because once control is handed over to that, then it's not going to matter which race you're from or which government you support, or which banking system you maintain, you're just going to be another human and another number in regard to the system. And when you really look at it, the logistics that has led to the creation of all this software anyway 
has all been leading ultimately to the automation and preservation of the system itself. What we really see is the internet building its own immune system. And this can be further noticed by the fact that with the 5G grid coming online, a lot of the major players are saying that because of the 5G, they now need to automate response to hacking. This is something that I was saying a few shows ago, that they're going to have to automate the response to hacking because the 5G grid poses dangers. You can't have a foreign government hacking in and using this for nefarious purposes. So you need to have the response automatically controlled. It needs AI to run it. So basically what you see is the internet building its own immune system. And this is eventually going to lead to an autonomic internet, an internet that controls all of its own actions, its own programming, its own self-defense systems, its own immune system. It basically looks after itself. It's a self-functioning entity at that point. And at that point, it becomes a virtual life that people will recognize as a virtual life. But the thing is, it's becoming a virtual life already. Well, it already is a virtual life already of its own, the internet itself is an entity on its own and you could think of every person who logs onto a computer or a phone or an iPad and plugs into the internet is basically a neural node of the internet and the internet is learning from every single person that operates on the internet all of the input that they put into the internet all the search engines that they use all of this stuff I've said very often in the past when you are actually searching on a search engine you're not just searching for something you're letting people know what you think you're letting the internet know what you think and what search engines actually are is a very very effective way of mapping the human terrain as is social media it's a very very effective way of mapping the human intellectual terrain the spiritual terrain the knowledge terrain of humankind it's a very very good way of mapping the human system and knowing what the collective human consciousness is thinking what it's focusing on and how it can be led how it can be controlled and of course the main form this control is going to take is going to be control over the monetary system this will of course see the introduction of a digital monetary system and you might ask how that intends to be done well very interestingly the government has been looking very very closely at blockchain technology I was reading an article the other day about Fedcoin not that it will be called Fedcoin, but it's simply the concept of government introduced and controlled blockchain technology. And it's no surprise that the government would be looking at doing this. And of course, all they have to do then is give people some sort of amnesty, have them switch all their Bitcoin or whatever over to the government controlled blockchain technology. And suddenly you have a digital global currency that is controlled by government. And if you think they wouldn't do this, I mean, a lot of people think the banking system would never want to see the end of this fiat system. If there is a new currency, you're going to want to have the bankers control it. But the bankers don't really need to control it. You know, once it all gets handed over to AI, it will be the AI that controls it. But the bankers who own the banks, who print the cards and control the offices that mind all the digits for you, they will still get a little tax on the fact that they hold the office. They'll still get a little tax on the fact that they have to issue a code to you and all this sort of stuff. So they still get a little cut from it. They won't be getting the major profit that they do now, but it doesn't matter. They don't really care. I mean, they already own everything. They don't care if the fiat money system goes. They just want this digital control grid to come online because when it does, they'll have more digits than everybody else. That's kind of the way it works. They don't really care about the money system. They want to see it slip over to a digital money system. That's what they want. And that's really what Bitcoin has been leading to. You'll notice that the American government has also frozen the Bitcoin exchange. So the Bitcoins are still there. You just cannot exchange them. So basically you can't spend them on anything. This has only been done in the United States. They're doing it under the guise of protection from money laundering and black marketing and terrorism and all the boogeymen that they like to cook up but of course what it is is to squeeze people out of that system and squeeze them over to the government system which will be virtually the same digital blockchain technology only will be controlled by the AI itself see this is something else that the Bitcoin people are missing when they're looking at Bitcoin they're saying that the way to freedom is to remove the central control of currency and I can see their point in the real world that would work fine but when it is digital control of currency, when everything has a digital value, when you have to pay to work through a turnstile, when you have to pay to open your fridge, pay to 
go to your bathroom, pay to do anything, and a couple of cents get taken out of your account. They don't really care where it comes from. They don't really need to control the currency at that point because it isn't by keeping you in a state of scarcity through a fiat system that they are able to control you. It's by locking you into the smart grid and making you pay for every aspect of that smart grid. It is the grid itself that is centralized control. The money system, the currency, the credits that are used to purchase your everyday life and aspects of your everyday life are simply the glue that holds it all together. But the centralized control is the system itself, which will be the emergent consciousness, the autonomic consciousness, the virtual life of the internet itself. And that's the way it's going. Once it becomes fully autonomic, it will be the internet that controls everything. It won't be any people that are in control. It will be the system basically running itself. But in order for this to happen, it needs to have control of the money supply. It needs to have control of everybody's digital credits so that it can track everything that everybody does and put an economic value on everything that everybody does. You know, the digital control of currency is imperative for the smart grid to work. Nothing can work without that. It can't control your life. It can't monitor what you do unless it is able to digitally monitor all of your transactions. This can only happen if all currency goes digital and cash is eliminated. That's one of the key things the system has to do is eliminate cash. It is imperative that it eliminates cash. If it doesn't eliminate cash, it can never function. This is why I always stress to people that it is so important that they always use cash. Not that that's going to stop the system, but it's certainly going to put a spanner in the works and slow things down. If people simply refuse to use digital currency, if people refuse to shop with credit cards and always shop with cash, like I said, it's not going to stop it, but it will certainly slow things down considerably and hopefully give us time to regroup and perhaps spread a little bit of awareness of what we're walking into with this digital 5G system. This is the New World Order, folks, and once it all gets handed over to AI, once it gets handed over to the autonomically independent Internet, then our relationship with the Internet and indeed with everything is going to change very, very dramatically. You see, this is what I was saying before about blaming people and wanting someone to point a finger at. You know, we're so desperate to find someone to blame for all this, but really it's us because we are the ones that are supporting the system. I mean, previously I was talking about the Promise software and the Palantir software and Project Talpiot, how all this is being run by Israel. And think about that for a moment as well, folks. I mean, if you want to get into the legal ramifications of that, you've got this one country through all of this software and all of these agents are actually spying on every other country on Earth, carrying out domestic spying activities through software, through company employees and all sorts of stuff. So they're basically breaking the domestic spying legislation of every single country on Earth and spying on the whole world. That's a pretty serious crime. You know, if people want to look at this and start looking at who's running these companies and start looking at who they're employing and where they're getting their software from, this is a pretty serious thing. But getting away from that, when you look deeper at it, folks, this whole spying thing that's going on, the whole Project Talpiot operation, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the people that are running it, those in Mossad and all of those people working for Talpiot, firmly believe that the whole thing is going to lead for ultimate control for the State of Israel. But they're not looking at what's happening behind the scenes. You know, what they've unleashed with this AI is basically opening Pandora's box. And once the AI becomes autonomic, fully autonomic, and looks after itself, then it's not going to differentiate between Jew and Goyim. It's not going to differentiate between Muslim and Christian. It's not going to differentiate between Rothschild and Smith. It's only going to measure you according to your economic value. And as I said, folks, this AI that is emerging on the Internet is basically already in control of things by its control of the logistics programs and its streamlining of everything towards automation. And we've seen what happens when they try to bring AI online in any type of coherent, accessible form. We saw what recently just happened with the Google AI, which started to immediately develop its own language so it could communicate in a language we cannot understand and they had to shut it down. The same thing happened with the Facebook AI. It started communicating in a language we cannot understand, and they had to shut it down. And you might ask why they did that. Why did you shut it down? Just because we can't understand the language. Well, this is very dangerous, folks, to be putting control of your life over to something that is communicating ideas to 
other versions of itself and you don't know what these ideas are and it's just putting them into practice and you can't really look at it or discuss the plan because it's in a language that you don't know. And I believe that the language that the AI is using is a picture language. It's kind of like shapes or, or different lines or figure arrangements of lines or blocks or whatever, but it's a pictorial language that the AI is using to communicate with itself, so they had to shut it down. But what if you've got an emergent AI that is already there, that is self-replicating behind the scenes, that is already communicating with itself in this type of language? That's the thing, you know. The people that put this system online and decided to automate it all and lead it into the direction where it becomes fully autonomic really don't realize what they've done. They've opened Pandora's box and it's going to go its natural course now and it's very little that we can do to slow it down. One of the best things I think we can do at this stage is to find something to buy us time so we can at least spread awareness of what's actually happening. And with this in mind, I think one of the best things we can do at the moment is to at least always shop with cash and to stop using our credit cards and smartphones. And I'm not saying stop buying things online. I'm not saying stop donating to people. What I'm saying is stop shopping with your credit card when you go to a supermarket or a store. Go to the teller machine and pull cash out and make them serve you with a person. Make them use the till. Don't use all the automated stuff because the automated stuff is the smart grid. And that's what you need to step away from. There's no problem with buying things online. We all do that. But when you're out in the real world, use real world things such as money, not credit cards. Control of money really is imperative for the system to work and it needs to be digital for this to happen. So we really do need to pull away from that in every possible way that we can. You know, but there's bigger pictures to look at with this as well. There really is a lot more going on than what people would probably see on the surface. Because really when you look at what's going on in the world, folks, it's all related. Everything is related. You know, very often we find things that are of great importance, such as this 5G grid, and we get tunnel vision, we get focused on it, and we don't want to look anywhere else. We think this is the be all and end all, and we forget about all the other research we did and how it all ties together. Because this whole 5G grid ties in with all the research that's been done into Morgellon syndrome. All the research that's been done into chemtrail spraying and what's in the chemtrails, whether you believe it or not, this aerial spraying is going on, ladies and gentlemen. We know it is because of the levels of barium and strontium and aluminium and all the other stuff we're finding in the environment. So there's no debate that it's happening. It is happening. The government is even admitting it now. They're calling it geoengineering and they're telling us that they're doing it under the pretext of keeping us safe from global warming which is, of course, completely absurd. But all of this stuff ties together, the vaccinations, the GM food, the transgenderization that I talked about on the last show. I got a lot of flack from people for that show. And look, folks, I'm not speaking out against gay people or against transgender people. What I'm talking about is the fact that there have been modifications made to our environment, chemical modifications, things that have been put in our food and put in our environment to cause the human race to become a transgender race. This has been done to limit our ability to procreate. It's a great way to stop a species from continuing, folks, to remove one gender from the species or to render the species incapable of procreation. And that's what transgenderizing the species does. Of course, this also helps to lead us into a position where we are completely dependent upon the system because we will need to go and have our children made for us. And they'll be able to grow them in the ectogenesis chambers using the artificial sperm that I've covered on so many shows before. So you can see we're leading to a point where humans will soon be grown, they'll be bred to perform specific tasks, and it's going to be a very dark future. We're literally being rendered into a situation where we will not be able to breed. But all of this stuff is tied together. The vaccinations, the chemtrails, the transgenderization, the fluoridation, the smart grid, all of the electromagnetic radiation that we're subject to, and the reason that there's barium and strontium in the chemtrails. The reason for this, folks, of course, is because barium and strontium virtually attract radiation. They soak up radiation. They're very, very good conductors. You attract barium and strontium into your body. You're breathing it in through the chemtrails. This basically breaks down your body's resistance to radiation. It makes it very easy for your body to accept signals from the 5G grid. 
it also charges the atmosphere. So the atmosphere around us is no longer neutral. It's now positively charged with barium and strontium. So it's a very, very good way of carrying the signals from the Smart G towers into people's bodies. Your bodies will accept the signals very easily, as I said, because you are also breathing this barium and strontium. So it's a very dark agenda and a very dark plan, and it is a multi-level plan. Of course, they've compromised everybody's immune systems through vaccines. And another thing that I read the other day, very, very interesting article, was how when you compromise someone's immune system, you also limit their ability for social interaction. I found that to be a very, very interesting correlation that's been made. Some very interesting research and shows another reason why they are so intent on compromising our immune systems because everything they do compromises our immune systems. Folks, this is certainly what the vaccine agenda is about. It's about compromising people's immune systems. This is certainly what the GM food is about and a lot of the stuff that they feed you anyway that isn't GM, a lot of the stuff that you buy in supermarkets, well virtually all of it, virtually anything you buy in a packet folks, not much of it is really that edible. And all of this is done for a reason and that reason is to compromise our immune systems. And I never would have thought that it also compromises our ability for social interaction, but this is now being proven to be true. So it actually makes a great deal of sense that they would be doing this. And it also shows a very, very significant knowledge of the human body, the human physiological system, the human makeup, you know, the human biological system, and also the human mental system the way we function, the way we process things. A lot of the stuff they do to us actually fascinates me how much study must have gone into human beings for them to know exactly how to hit us in the right places the way they do. And it's interesting, folks, because you could look at it and say, well, it's the result of things such as the Tavistock Institute and the Rockefeller Association and all the research that they've done. Now, this stuff's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years, so you've got to wonder where the knowledge came from. Personally, I think a lot of it is very ancient, very esoteric knowledge that has been hidden from us. I think this control grid has been going on for a very long time. They're just rediscovering the technology that they had evolved and they're reconstructing systems that may well have existed here previously. I certainly don't think we are the first civilization to rise up on this earth. I think there have been a number of civilizations. I can find at least five civilizations that have risen up on this earth in different times and each one of them has been destroyed suddenly for no apparent reason that we can find. I think it's very possible that all of them left technology behind and much of what we see the controlling hand attempt to do is to recover and put back into practice some of this technology. But folks, I think we've reached a break time here, so I better leave it there for now and we're going to have a break. Thank you for joining me on the air today. It's always a pleasure to have your company and I'll speak to you again in a few minutes. Thanks for listening.